The Sega Genesis has some of the best box art that I've ever seen, and I'm going to show you 12 games from my collection. I'm your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and if you'd like to see exclusive videos about Japanese game hunting, you can head over to my Patreon. Starting out, we've got some big hitters right here. We've got Strider on the left, and then a little relatively known shooter called Curse. Now, I want to start out with this because I just randomly found this at a hard-off one day, and the box art looked pretty wild. It's by Micronet, but it is a really good shooter. It's, it's well, really good. Would I put it in my top 10? No, but it's good. I'd recommend it if you can find it. It's not expensive. It's not really that sought after. It is maybe a $20 game at m most, but it is the whole just package is so good. Like just from that really creepy opening to the monsters that look quite hellish to the cool machine design. Nihon Ichi, <laughs> Japan number one. It's the level design is, it's spooky. The story is weird, but it just works. It's a decent game and I'm surprised People don't really seem to talk that much about it, beside the fact that it's just, it's a, it's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good game. Let's put you away and let's move over to Strider, which I would say, yeah, it's a, it's a much more well-known. Whiprush we'll get to. That's a really good game. But Strider, the Flying Dragon, if you read the kanji correctly, which I, I hope I am. But this is another sort of action platformer. Looks really cool, sort of in the vein of sort of stylistically and in terms of the gameplay, looks similar. I don't want to say it is similar, but certainly looks on the surface similar to like Ninja Gaiden a little bit. Although I think I, I would say I might prefer Ninja Gaiden just because that is a game that is just so memorable despite it being so difficult. But just look at the different sprite animations. That is so cool looking. That is so great, and that's why I think Strider has the reputation that it does. If I'm remembering it correctly, and I'm, and I'm if I'm remembering that this is the Strider that uh, is, I think, a little bit more famous. Great character designs. Like, look at this. That almost looks like an Eldar from, like, an Eldar Guardian from Warhammer 40k. Which reminds me, I need to get, I need to start, uh, some one project that I'm, I'm trying to work on while I'm in America is actually, uh, de-painting my miniatures that I, you know, I painted when I was like 13. I didn't know what I was doing, but getting around to actually, you know, painting them decently, which, which will happen one day perhaps. But that is Strider. Then we've got on the left, Arceus Odyssey, which still has the sticker on it from Hard Off. This cost me 16 bucks back in the day uh, by Wolf Team of all people. And it is an RPG, a, t a potentially co-opable RPG. I didn't realize you could play two-player with this. But let's take a look at it. Already loving the character design and the color scheme that's sort of gold, black, and white. That is very thought out. Wolf Team made some really great... Aren't, aren't they responsible for making some shooters? I didn't think they would have gone out and made an RPG, but that, I guess, just shows how versatile that team is. Was Wolf Team responsible for Final Zone 2? They may have been. If I'm if I'm thinking it's the development studio that I'm thinking of. Again, the art is just like, that's really why I even just want to make these videos is because the art in these manuals is a lot of it's just going to get lost because these games, you just don't see them being re-released anymore. Oh, Grenade, another great game. And a lot of this art is just going to be lost to time, despite it being so good. Like, I really hope these artists, uh, I hope they, they probably did not get paid well, because I'm assuming uh, video game art does not get you paid. But, like, just this, this cover. I, all right, all right, I'm going to say something. I'm going to spit hot fire right now. I think that the Super Famicom is the better system overall, but I think that the Mega Drive has the better box art. I'm saying it here. I know I'm going to get a lot of people in the comments telling me about how great the Genesis is. And I don't, I'm don't. i not saying it's a bad system. I'm just saying that I prefer the Famicom. But when it comes to the art, I think the Mega Drive has the superior art. Just you don't see this on the, on the Super Famicom. You just don't. Look at, I mean, look at the guiding lines. Look at the coloring, the texture of the actual, like, this is a painting. 
This should be in a museum. And this is just a, like a, a small time shooting game, Whip Rush. It's a great game, but it's not really that sought after. It's like a 20 or $30 game. And it's got some good gameplay, but look at that art. Sandwich Man. <laughs> Gomez, Vasquez, I didn't realize we were just going to have some such pedestrian names. Unsociable, Cheeky, Cheeky, Jabba 2, <laughs> Jabba 3. <laughs> I won't say that because I don't want to get demonetized by YouTube. But this is wild. This is crazy. And then look at that Death Star look at a core right there. Whip Rush, great game. I definitely have played this through. Good game as well as a Grenada. Now, Zero Wing on the left is Notorious. I think the true version is probably, I don't think this version has the voice acting on it. You've got to play the one for the PC Engine CD to get the true uh, all your base memes. My only issue with Zero Wing is that the sound is bad. Oh yeah, and unfortunately uh, this got ripped off here, but the game is still very playable except for the sound. The Mega Drive version's sound is terrible. It makes the game unplayable. It hits that sort of um, Gardic Gaiden level of high-pitched whine from just the basic shot that I just cannot play this game anymore. It's just too annoying. As good as I think the game may be, and as hellishly beautiful as these enemy designs are, might have become, I just can't play this game anymore. I just can't do it. Wow, I'm so, this is so good, the art on this. I forgot how good the art on this stuff was. Like it just really, it just really gets to you. And then you've got this classic Disney art too. And a lot of this Disney stuff is never gonna get re-released. Like Quackshot, has Quackshot ever been re-released? I don't think so. And where else are you gonna see this stuff? You're not. You're just not. Quackshot. Yeah, I knew, uh, someone someone highly recommended Quackshot to me, so that's why I picked it up. Look at this. You got Scrooge. You got the boys. You got Goofy and Gyro. I really got to rewatch the duck, the original DuckTales. I used to watch that a lot when I was a kid. I've got a couple, actually, in my parents' basement. I've got a couple VHS tapes of this, as well as the movie. Did the movie ever get released on Blu-ray? I'd love to watch the movie again. That's really, when I think about DuckTales, that's really, I'm thinking about the movie of DuckTales. The one where they like go into a pyramid and find like a mummy. And then New Zealand Story, this got weirdly expensive. This is like a $60 game now. I remember finding it for like 20. I don't know why it's sought after. It's, it's an action platformer. I'm sure it's perfectly acceptable, but is it $60 worth it? Uh, that's That's gonna be up to you. By Taito, released in 1990. Let's see, let's pull out the manual. Little, so this is, I don't know exactly what this is, but you can tell this these brown marks here. That is just, it's like mold or it's like, you know, the chemical discoloration. It's not deadly, I think, to these manuals. I, I certainly have not seen it spreading along the manual, but you know, when you think about these are paper products, these are essentially organic material here. This is made out of organic compounds this stuff is not going to last forever. Books do not last forever unless, you know, you're like the original Shakespeare uh, volumes and you're, and you're protected in a museum. If, you just, if you've got this stuff stored in your closet, it's not going to last forever. The, ROM, the mask ROMs might, but the manuals will not. World of Illusion, also known as I Love Mickey and Donald, The Mysterious Magic Box. This is not... Castle of Illusion? I don't think so. I don't think I have Castle of Illusion. But World of Illusion, another Disney game that I think I re-released, maybe co-opable. I don't want to quite say beat them up, but definitely explore where I do think you can jump on some enemies' heads. A little card there. I think it's sort of like a little bit Alice in Wonderlandy, a little bit. So you got <laughs> Mickey and Dolan fall into this evil wizard's uh realm and you've got to walk around wait which one is the one with the baby spiders is that castle of illusion i'm pretty sure that's castle of illusion look at that you've got the cards yeah tell me that's not supposed to be alice in wonderland but then i mean disney doesn't outright own alice in wonderland obviously because that was lewis carroll but disney having that association with alice in wonderland <laughs> is very clear 
here. Oh, let's move along to, man, four games to go. We've got on the right, we've got Tatsujin, also known as Truxton. And this actually, this was recently re-released by Limited Run. They redid the cartridge, they redid the clamshell case, but this is the OG Truxton, a great game. Still very playable today and relatively cheap. I mean, it used to be expensive. It used to be like a $40 game for the Mega Drive, but now that the now that the collectors have sort of moved on to future generations, this actually, it's like a $30 game now and it's worth it. It is worth 30 bucks. I've never beaten it, but I have put a lot of time in the Truxton because again, I am someone who loves scrolling shooters and is just very bad at them. <laughs> but once I practice, I can get okay. I can clear a few of them. And there is the tr Dogurava, but I'm going to call it Truxton because... <laughs> Look, if it's going to be on the cover and you're going to call it Tatsujin, you're Tatsujin now. You're Truxton. That's what I'm going to call you. e -swat. Look, I mean, it's it's like, are you just trying to be Mega Man at this point? It's the Cyber Police. <laughs> Love this. See, you know, so many games. Would, and I don't even think, yeah. When you look at look at the backs of these, so many games. Let me even compare it to... Yeah, like look at, I'm gonna show you what the key difference is between Super Famicom games and Mega Drive games. Look at this. On the right, you do have some cool artwork, don't get me wrong, but it's basically just being overwhelmed by all of this text. You've got a couple of screenshots and text, 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 lines of text. Who's gonna read this? If you're like eight years old at the time, you're not reading this stuff. You know what you're gonna do? You're gonna pick up the Genesis game and you're gonna be like, look at these beautiful sprites that they've blown up for the back of the screen. There's two sentences total of text on the back of this game. And then they've got big, beautiful screenshots. They tell you it's one player, it's a shooting game. You know exactly what you're getting just from the first five seconds of looking at this box. Ogre Battle, I don't even know where to begin with this. Okay, so you've got the titles, but then paragraph of text, actually two paragraphs, three, four, five paragraphs of text. No, get out of here. I don't want that. What I want is eSWAT and a cool guy with a Mega Man hand blowing stuff up. That's what I want. Let's open this up. Let's see what we get inside. We've got the cartridge, which is just basically the front <laughs> eSWAT. There's your uh, katakana if you would like to practice. I certainly know that I need to. He's like, it's like can hover. Look at, and then I love it when they blow up the sprites. It's actually really great that they were able to blow up the sprites to this size. And, you know, they keep the pixels there, but it's still got to be higher resolution. It has to be unique artwork for those sprites because if you were blowing up the original, you know, 240 by 240 <laughs> or whatever the 4x3 picture is, it's not gonna look that good when you blow up the sprites. Oh, that, that picture does look pretty clear, actually. That looks really great. How many missions? Six missions. Then we go, oh, is this how you're supposed to, oh yeah, this is how you're supposed to actually use the game. Make sure you don't, um, don't let a dragon lick the bottom of your cartridge. All right, don't let a dragon step on it. Uh, when you're, <laughs> make sure you let your fairy turn off the system when you're done playing. Although what they don't do is actually, so in Nintendo games, you will very often have a little insert that will tell you to unplug the AC adapter from the wall because it will still draw current. However, Sega is just telling you to turn off your system, not to unplug the game itself, or to unplug the AC adapter itself. And Golden Axe, look at that. It's just big, beautiful artwork. That's what we want to see. Golden Axe, not very expensive. The other two Golden Axes, let's see, Golden Axe 2 is like 20, 30 bucks. Golden Axe 3 is, I want to say 60. It's a good game, not as good as Streets of Rage. And you can sort of see that financially because uh, the third Streets of Rage was a little bit rare. Kind of difficult to find. That's like 120, maybe even $140 now. Whereas the third Golden Axe is maybe like 60. Look at those rippling muscles. And then, then you've got this guy, a little, little belly, a little belly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold on, where's the dude, where's the dude? There's him, Axe Battler, Tyrus Flare. Okay, and then you got the dwarf. All right, thank you very much. 
golden axe. Let's put you over here, and then we will wrap up with Grenada, a fantastic shooter that I that I highly recommend. It's easily like 15, 20 bucks now, so still very affordable. Big mistake. Wow, wow. The far future of 2016, October. Oh boy, that was a, yeah, October 2016. That was a weird time, wasn't it? But opening up the game itself, I think, is this the one? I swear, ah, uh, yes, here we go. Because I knew I had a label that was coming off. And you can see here, the, the glue is drying out. You can see how it's getting kind of crusty down there. And so the label starting to come off. It's not so bad. It would be very easy to maybe get a glue stick and very thinly apply. Oh yeah, this is a this is a wolf team shooter. There we go. I knew wolf team made shooters. Look at that. That is such a great. That is a portrait and a half. A little bit lacking in the art department, but what it does not have in art besides the cover, it makes up for in incredibly good gameplay. Very fun scrolling shooter. So that has been uh, my 12 of 24, half of my Mega Drive games. I have another video on the channel uh, that I put up before this that features all of my other games that I have for the Sega Mega Drive. That's been it. That's This has been some beautiful stuff. Glad I could go through it with everyone watching this. And that's it for me. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching and... Mahalo.